folks 21st century caveman here hope everybody's well hope everybody's happy and welcome to another episode in the series how to make a man cave she shed workshop cabin in the woods whatever label you attach the process is exactly the same so this is part two of two um, on how i made the door for the man cave um, so please check out the previous video um, if you missed how I actually made the frame. So basically I've already attached a sheet of very heavy duty plastic to the framework on one side and I will be doing this on both sides. I've cut it to size and now I've got some 11mm OSB board which I've once again cut to size and I'm actually just going to fix it to the framework. So I'm just sort of you know measuring where all of the um, all of the, um, the the timber work is underneath, so I know where to screw into place and secure the OSB board. As you can see, I'm using some deck screws, forty millimeters long. They'll be more than adequate for this job. I'm securing them every sort of four or five inches. By way of a recap, the framework is made out of C18 construction timber, which has already been treated. And the reason I decided to use that was because C18 timber is a, um, a very strong, very dense wood, which is perfect for an application like this. And because it's such a dense wood, it will actually hold the screws very tightly indeed and resist warping. Okay then, so these are heavy duty hinges which I purchased from Wix. They're 400 millimeters long and I'm just using the same deck screws to secure these. And you can see that it certainly helps having marked out the timber framework underneath so I know exactly where to position everything. I think one of the things I'd mention actually when securing these is the fact that you don't want to sort of you know go through full throttle and secure these really tightly you know put them in loosely just so they actually nip into the metal work just so it gives you a little bit of room for adjustment on the um, on the hinge if it's required and then you can tighten them up. So once all three hinges are on then I've just gone back to um, secure um, the rest of the OSB um, on the framework. reason that I didn't do it beforehand is because I didn't want to put screws into the, um, into the board and therefore hamper the installation of the hinges and as you can see I do actually have three heavy duty hinges on this door because I know it is going to be pretty heavy. So we're just turning this over then and it will then become clear why I've actually got the plastic sheet on here. So I will actually be insulating this door and it's important that no water vapour gets into the insulation. This insulation, you've seen it before, it's the same sort of stuff which I used to insulate the walls on the man cave. It's 100 millimetres thick and um, it's perfect for a job like this. I also purchased the rolls when they were very, very cheap from Wix. So everything really I've tried to purchase when it's been on sale or on offer. I 
and not only will this help you know to keep the place warm inside obviously it will help to rejoice to reduce noise as well and this stuff's really easy to work with all you need is a sharp blade and uh, just cut stuff to size easy peasy and obviously if you cut it slightly oversized it just means that you've got a little bit of a compression fit in there so when it expands it will help it to keep in place although I will be securing this using some uh, using some gaffer tape Now the tape you use for this, it doesn't need to be um, a particularly branded gaffer tape or anything like that. I normally use stuff which I've purchased from Lidl or Aldi. Um, it's just a mechanical fixing just in the likely event that this insulation um, falls down basically and we staple these tapes into place anyway so it's no big deal. So once again um, we're putting some plastic sheet on the other side and as I say you may recall that this is the stuff I put uh, to protect the insulation on the inside of the man cave. So this is really nice thick stuff, completely waterproof and um, it's very sort of heavy duty and durable. So I'm just feeling my way then just to um, get the timbers underneath just to make sure that I don't tear the plastic when I'm hitting it with the, uh, the stapler. This step isn't absolutely essential really, I've just done it as a precautionary measure. You may recall that this is a roofing membrane which is completely waterproof and breathable and the only reason I'm putting it on here is to secure the plastic underneath to protect it basically before I actually fix the feather edge boards because the timber is quite rough on those and I didn't want it to puncture the plastic underneath and this membrane is very um, it's very durable very strong and I just thought it'd offer a little bit more protection to the plastic underneath just to make sure that everything's kept completely waterproof and the bad weather can't get in So these feather edge boards then, they're exactly the same as I've used to clad the outside of the building. They're 150 metres, in fact no they're not, <laughs> they're 150 millimetres wide or 6 inches. And these are really very good straight boards, you know they're actually very good. And I'll certainly be using the same supplier again. And this little jig here, look, this is just something I use to maintain 
the consistent spacing on the boards when I fix them into place. And here you'll see me fixing these boards using clout nails which are 50 millimeters long with an extra large head. Right folks, as you can see we've made some decent progress and I've left um, the left and right hand side boards off the door so um, it doesn't you know, get in the way when I'm actually fitting the door into place and also fitting some of the security hardware on there. Now on the top and bottom of the door there are some voids which I could easily fill with timber but I've decided not to do that because it will simply add unnecessary weight to an already heavy door. So what I've decided to do basically just to fix some, um, some chicken wire in place and fill these voids using expanding foam. So I'm just making a little jig here, look, just putting a couple of holes in the timber um, and they will act as, um, you know, little sort of, you know, wax areas for me to spray the foam into. And I'm going to put some plastic down before I put the, foam, uh, the, uh, the board on here so the foam doesn't stick to the board. Now we come up to the fun part here and this stuff is absolutely amazing. I actually purchased it from Screwfix at a very reasonable price. It's about five and a half quid, something like that. And um, it really is quite surprising how far this stuff goes. You know, you don't need as much as you think. So here we go, look, that's done an absolutely cracking job. And that foam, because of other plastic on there, is really smooth indeed. So we just need to cut back the plastic and uh, just trim it up on the top and on the bottom. So in the next couple of clips then, you'll see me putting the door into place and eventually fixing it. Um, I did have to sort of, you know, make two or three adjustments on this, but I can't show absolutely every clip of um, video footage okay. So basically, you know, I'm just screwing it into place using 50 millimeter uh, turbo silver screws, which secure this really nicely indeed. So 
so this opens really nicely there is a gap of about 10 mil and all edges but i'm actually going to draft proof those um, at a later stage so the next thing we need to do then is to fit this um this hardware to the door And here you can see I'm just basically going to mark where the hardware needs to go and uh, basically just trim back some of this timber. timber. Right, this is just a very quick tutorial as to how this thing works. And this big bolt here, that's the main thing really which secures this item to the door. Now I did actually use two different size drill bits to drill this hole. I just used a smaller diameter than a larger diameter to reduce the risk of splitting the wood and making a mess. And another thing I forgot to mention actually, there is approximately 30 or 40 millimeters overlap on all of these feather edge boards. Now this is the reason I left the feather edge boards off both sides of this door so I can actually fit this security hardware. So as a final security measure I decided to buy um, a couple of very cheap drill bits which can be used to drill metal and all I'm doing here really is just sort of you know drilling out just messing up the tops of these screws so somebody can't just simply come along and unscrew this hardware. So there's a couple of drill bits in there, they cost about three quid less than that actually. So this is just for, you know, a one use only job. And uh, you know, yeah, it did the job fine. Clearly there's no point in going to all this time and effort if somebody can simply come with a, uh, um, a battery operated drill and um, unscrew the hardware on here. So um, a little bit later then, after having some tea, I, um, I've cut a few more of these boards just in order that I can start repairing um, the timber work here and uh, just trying to finish the job off really. As you can see, it's getting dark, although it's only about 4 p.m. actually in the afternoon. So you can see I've cut back the sort of, you know, the finishing edge, the two by two piece of timber on the edges of the board. And also I've cut them back at an angle um, to enable me to fit the padlock properly and also to shed water. But that will become clear in a minute. So the following day then I'm just um, 
fixing the final bits of featherboard. Um, you may notice that the featherboards have been reversed and because the hasp or whatever you call it um, is nice and thin I can actually hide this behind the feather edge board and um, you know keep it looking nice and neat and tidy. Once again 50mm galvanized nails uh, being sort of you know spaced every sort of you know three or four inches and this will finish it off nicely. So there we go, look, that fits quite nicely. Now, you will notice that there's about a 10 millimeter gap around all of the edges of the door. And what I'm going to do to resolve that is to get some of the feather edge boards, just cut them down to size basically, and slide them into the gaps. Um, and if there are any sort of, you know, um, remaining gaps, I'm just gonna use some, um, some draft proofing tape on there. And this also finishes it off quite nicely as well. Right guys, so we're coming to the end of this video now. Um, the next video, I'll be showing you how I made the window for the man cave. Thanks for watching.